G'day, Dylan from the Rowing Boat. G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. Do you like taking long exposures? Do you go all night long? I've recently been trying to increase the, not just the number of exposures, but the overall integration time in my images. And now that I've got a lot of the little bugs and gremlins sorted out in my observatory, I've been really able to automate most of the night. It's become very, very push button. The sequence is ready to go. I press play. I come back at midnight, maybe 1 a.m., maybe 2 a.m. Everything's just there. The data's sitting there and the data is so good. So I've been going hard on just one target. It's the longest integration I've ever done in my life. I know other astrophotographers go way, way harder than I do, but for me, this is a long time. I've put in some effort here. So I'm gonna show you how this turned out. And as always, my journey should contain little nuggets of wisdom, little tips and tricks here and there that will help you take your astrophotography to the next level, like I'm doing in real time in front of you. Uh, the quest for round stars continues. I want vegan stars. That is egg-free, no bloat, no fat. Thin, little, anemic, vegan stars. That's what I want. So join me on my quest for vegan stars and the longest integration I've ever done. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. So in my last video, I showed a particular little star aberration that had kind of ruined my last image. So before I went into this one, I wanted to go through and really pull down the whole image train and debug everything. And thankfully, there was one comment on the last video from AstroQuest1. Thank you for recognizing that aberration. You were, you were bang on the money. It was actually because I'd collimated the scope with the mirror too tight. Uh, so by loosening off all the screws and then recollimating again, I was able to get really sharp pinpoint stars. Vegan stars, if you will. Something else I've been avoiding for a long time is installing this filter wheel. And the reason I was avoiding it is because I use a filter draw system, a magnetic little draw, and that worked well with the raster as well. But I've had this sitting here for a while and I've got to say, I really love it. Thank you QHY for sending me this. I've installed all my filters that are sort of locked away now in this filter wheel. I'm not going to be returning to the raster for a little while, or at least that sort of commits me for the rest of this winter. Uh, but it's all installed nicely now, so that's really just improved my life a thousand percent. Now I can do really long image runs and change filters on the fly with the sequence, and it just takes another step, another reason I had to go out to the observatory. I should be able to hear a little humming noise. Sounds good. All that's left to do now is to refocus all of this, make sure that the off-axis guider is also in focus with this new image train, and test it out. So this is a complete mishmash of wiring, uh, and I need to sort it out. I've been hesitant to clean up the wiring because I change stuff so much. All of these USB cables have been swapped around between different cameras and devices and things. But I've kind of set up the system now, kind of just the way I want it. So with that said, I think I'll just clean up these wires. And shout out to Nick Ivanov, who sent me these handy little 3D printed cable routing things. You can slip a cable tie in there if you need to, to whack them on anywhere. Or just use them to uh, organize your cables into one steady stream.
Jesus, Mary and Joseph. What the heck am I actually looking at here? I've looked at this for days and it still blows my mind. If you're taking a photo of the dragons of Ara, it's really tempting to make it landscape so you get the dragons looking sick. But if you rotate the camera to this awkward angle, you'll notice the dragon's egg here. Because it's on the edge of this huge hydrogen emission, the image of the egg is bathed in this glowing red hydrogen which pours in from the left hand side. I checked the Bible for information, but it didn't say anything. So I checked the New Testament, and there was still nothing. So I checked the New New Bible, and this still said nothing about the dragon's egg. Of course, the first thing you notice is the shell. Not one, but two shells. The inner one is definitely being ionized by the O-type star, so it's glowing bright red pink, but the outer shell is faint in HA, but it really shows up in O3. There's a lot of oxygen in there. In my image, the star is bloated with this outer halo, but that's because I pushed the oxygen really hard. So that's actually a, a, a mirror reflection there, that halo. I pushed the oxygen three really hard, stretching it harder than I should, which made things a bit crunchy, but it was worth it to see this outer shell. O-type stars are rare, hot, and luminous, and there are only about 20,000 in the entire Milky Way. And we've caught this one in a really quirky part of its evolution after a period of violent outbursts in its adolescence, which have created these shells. It's now in middle age where it starts to expand and moving slowly towards an even more violent supernova death, which will likely create yet another shell. Maybe an expanding supernova remnant or more likely a planetary nebula like the Helix Nebula because this particular star is small for an O-type star, only about 40 times bigger than our sun. We're also lucky to be viewing the inner bipolar emission side on, so we can see the burst coming out from each side. Bi meaning two and polar from the Latin polis meaning presence in blood. Sorry, wrong script. It means the end of the axis. Now, I've read this described as bipolar, which sounds similar to Eta Car, the star in Carina, which is definitely two blobs of stuff on each pole. But to me, this looks more like it's enveloped in a U shape around the star, with a clearing directly towards us, which lets us look straight in. Unlike Eta Car, which is completely surrounded by its outburst, which will dissipate in time. I've also noticed this small blue circle of oxygen right here. Somebody called Bray Falls, I've discovered some undocumented oxygen. It's probably just a weird little blob left over from the outer shell, but I like to think it was a small life-bearing planet that was minding its own business before the star burped and destroyed everyone, leaving only this little blip of oxygen floating around. But that's just me. Also, if you invert the image, you can see the shell structure really clearly. And look at this cool little boomerang wisp shooting out from the middle. Actually, in this view, it does look more bipolar with two clear fronts on either pole, but none behind it. We know on our sun that activity happens on the equator, which is where the spots and flares are more likely to emanate from. So it's possible we could imagine this star's magnetic polarity looks like this, but I'm just guessing here based on the morphology in this photo. But instead of guessing, I did what I always do when Google fails me, and I went to the NASA ADS paper database to see what I could find and there are only 28 papers. That's an incredibly small number of papers, and most of them are from last century, before we had space telescopes and MySpace. So I checked the most recent one, which says, the combined analyses of the known chromatics and of the new abundances of the nebula suggest either a helical morphology for the nebula, possibly linked to the magnetic geometry, hey, that's what I said, or the occurrence of a binary merger. The binary merger theory is interesting, but apart from that, the paper also acknowledges that we don't know much about this thing at all. There are more photos like mine from backyard photographers than there are actual papers or research into this truly exotic object that was actually kind of perfect for my little setup. Well, that was a journey, wasn't it? Sorry for the delay on this video. There's been a few things going on. My QHY 268M is held up in China in customs. Uh, hopefully I'll have that back. It's been gone since April. But as always, it's a pleasure and thank you for taking me in the photos. I enjoy seeing them. Hopefully you've learned something from all of this weird deep dive into the amazing Dragon's Egg Nebula. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. Thank you.